The First Minister wants the independence referendum to be held in the early part of the next Parliament. And I'm in agreement with former Falkirk parliamentarian Dennis Canavan, who calls for us to seize the day with a referendum next year. Talks on a UK-EU Brexit deal have passed the latest deadline, with the transition period due to end in a few days. UK ministers are asking businesses to get ready for who knows what while calling on supermarkets to stockpile food. None of us will be safe until everyone is, so at the first health statement of the week, I raised the global nature of the virus. If the ongoing rollout in the Western countries is successful and normality starts to return by spring, will he give his commitment that he will resist calls to declare the pandemic is over and accept that it will remain a global challenge until all countries have widespread vaccination programmes in place? And the never-ending stream of crony virus stories continues to surface highlighting the UK government issued contracts without tendering or adequate scrutiny. For the 16th consecutive opinion poll giving a majority for yes has been published. At the votes on the UK Internal Market Bill, I voted against rejecting the Lord's amendments to prevent the UK imposing its will on the devolved nations. At the Taxation Bill, I supported a new clause which sought to ensure scrutiny over the Treasury's use of powers. With a fortnight to go and no end to the crippling uncertainty and the threat of food and medicine shortages, the Brexit cost to Scotland being misgoverned by parties with priorities we didn't vote for was highlighted at PMQs. The Warwick study estimates that Scotland has already lost £4 billion as a result of Brexit. Bloomberg Economics estimate the UK has lost £200 billion by the end of this year, and Scottish Government analysis estimates every person in Scotland, on average, will be worse off to the tune of £1,600. Falkirk MP John McNally backed jobs at Alexander Dennis, calling out the Prime Minister over backtracking on promises to build 4,000 zero-emission buses, with the spending review only supporting 800. Does the Prime Minister therefore agree with me that it is time to put the pedal to the floor, get these low and zero emission bus production lines full in Falkirk, Yorkshire and Ballymena, support the bus building sector in full as he promised. Then we had the conclusion of the undemocratic UK Internal Market Bill, complete with a chamber protest and news of a legal challenge by the Welsh Government. This is going to get messy. At the second COVID update of the week, I focused on the need to mix as little as possible. The concerns from medical professionals that the Christmas COVID restriction relaxation will cost lives are not to be dismissed lightly. And would the Minister agree with me that if people are to form a bubble, that it should be kept as small as possible? On the independence front, further evidence just keeps getting better with the 17th consecutive poll in a row giving a lead for yes. The people of Scotland won't stand for Johnson's Trump-esque attempts to deny democracy. We will soon emerge as an independent country. My regular weekly surgeries will recommence in January after the festive break. Over the period, emails and office calls will continue to be checked for urgent inquiries. There were no changes to the local COVID restriction levels this week, which means Falkirk remains in level two and West Lothian in level three. Finally, let me extend my season's greetings for the festive period. This Christmas, please do everything you can to stay safe and protect your loved ones and yourself. If you can get through Christmas, staying in your own household, please do. Parliament is now expected to meet over the festive period to deal with the Brexit mess. I'll be taking a break from the weekly vlog, but will post updates on social media as the Brexit crisis unravels.